Okay, so continuing with lesson 1.2, we're in the second video, 1.2b, and we're on example number 5, which is on page 33. And um, again, we're just doing modeling here. It says between 1950 and 2008. Okay, so I know that those are the only years that uh, this formula is going to actually work. And here's the formula that they give me. f of x equals 0 0.0155x squared. I'm sorry, you have to sit here and stare at me, write these numbers, or stare at the screen and write these numbers. So there's the formula. Now that formula only works during this 58-year period, okay? Because that's what it says. All right, so between 1950 and 2008, the percent of voting population is given by this. So when we put any number in here for X, we get a number, which will be the percent of people that voted in that year's election. So A says, what are the values of X that correspond to the years 1960 and 2008? So we're trying to figure out what number we end up putting in for x, and that x, that's an x squared there. I don't know why I have that 2 on top of the x. But what they're saying is, in 1960, what number do we put in for x in order to find the percentage of people that voted? Well, it says that x is the number of years after 1950. So 1960 would be 10 years after um, 19, 1950. So, value of x would be 10. 2008, the value of x would be 58 here, 58 years after 1950. Okay, B says find f of 10 and explain its meaning. So, f of 10, what that means is, okay, notice there's a 10, and it's in place of the x. That means it goes in place of x there and there as well. So, all you're going to do is put 10 in for x squared, or for x and square it, and you're going to put a 10 in here and go ahead and solve that. That's all that f of 10 means is take that number, put it in place of the variable, in this case x, in the equation, and solve it. C says if this model is accurate for 2008, which is 58 years later, find the percent of the voting population who voted in the 2008 presidential election. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take the number 58 because that's how many years we have after 1950. Put that in there, square it, multiply it by that, multiply it by this, subtract the two, add 75.26, and I will get an answer there. Okay, so and in this case you're going to get an answer of... Um, 57%, which is a real shame that only 50% of the voting population voted in 2008. Hmm, wonder if that's... Anyway, I won't even go into that. Okay, example number six, aging workers. We used that formula in 1.2a at the very beginning of this section. So that, fam that uh, equation is somewhat familiar. And they're going through how to use your graphing calculator in order to... Uh, solve A and B. So I'll leave that on your own just to follow those instructions if you have a graphing calculator and want to do it. Also on page 35 you're using a spreadsheet, um, usually Excel, in order to uh, graph that. So uh, anyway, down at the bottom of 35 we got graphing data points and just showing you more examples of how to use um, your calculator in order to um, solve these kind of problems. So if you look at example 7, the number of U.S. adults with diabetes in thousands projected to 2050 is shown in table 1.2. Very, very important to understand how to read these uh, tables and graphs. So hopefully you can look at the year column there and then look and determine how many thousands of people um, have had diabetes in those particular years and go ahead and read through those as far as using your graphing calculator. I'm not going to teach you how to use a graphing calculator. I'm either going to assume you know how to use it or you can follow the instructions here in order to uh, to do that. And uh, 
that pretty much looks like that's about it for 1.2. It takes us to skills checks. And uh, those skills checks are very, very similar to the examples that we just went over. Now, if you look at numbers like uh, 15 through um, 18, you know, they're assuming you have a graphing calculator because they give you um, verbiage in such a way that a graphing calculator um, is going to be used. Also, looks like 1B and 2B are asking you to use graphing calculators. Now, it's good practice to learn how to use the graphing calculator and take that opportunity to figure things out. But if you don't have one, I know they're about 100 bucks, or um, choose to do it by hand, that's fine too, because you can still do the answers that way. If you, if you hope to continue on with math into calculus, um, graphing calculator would be very helpful. But anyway, that is 1.2, so should be good now.